Welcome to Shiloh. It's good to come to the house of the Lord. It's good as we celebrate the changing of the seasons, the coming of spring, springing forward with the change of time. And we know in our hearts the time for Jesus is always now. Let us go to the good Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we could come to this time and this place to hear good songs, to read the word from your good book to have the fellowship of believers, even if it's just in spirit. And we pray for a message this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have done, the mountains and the valleys that you've taken us through this week. We pray for those that may have been hurt this week in automobile accidents. We pray for those that are going through difficult times with their loved ones. We pray for healing for those dealing with the demons of cancer and illness and COVID and all the things that come after us. We pray for healing. We pray the light to shine in the darkness. We pray, thank you for the new doorways opening up. We pray especially this morning for Miss Tommy and Miss Connie and Miss Liz, the saints of our church, put a hedge of protection around them. We pray for Tristan and Dancy and Miss Becky and Roxanne and Danny and those that are safeguarding the legacy of this little house. May it grow and prosper in the future. May it spring forth. May we do a new thing. We pray for Teresa Worsham and Bryce for healing upon Teresa. We pray for what you're going to do, how you have brought people forth and say they need Jesus and say they need help. We pray for the ministries that you're working with, with Outlaw Church and Celebrate Recovery. And not just about us, but what you do, dear Lord, every day. As we walk through the valley of the shadow, let us not fear, but let us know that we need to keep holding on to Jesus all the time. May your Holy Spirit guide us through the may the words of life of your Son guide us and may we look to you, our Father, our Daddy in Heaven who loves us no matter what. 
We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
And for our scripture reading this morning, let us turn in our Bibles to the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter, and the 14th and the 15th verse. I say again, Mark 1, verses 14 and 15. Listen now unto the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Praise be unto the Lord our God for these words. Amen. If you would, please bow your heads in prayer. Great Master and Holy Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the ability to gather wherever we may be in your holy name. And we thank you, O Lord, that the time is fulfilled, that the kingdom of God is at hand. And we ask you, O Lord, that you would grant us the courage and the strength of will to make that kingdom a reality in our hearts and all around us, that we and all those beside us may repent and believe the gospel. And I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.
our message this morning, I'm going to the Gospel of Mark chapter 1, starting verse 14. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent you and believe in the gospel. Praise be the Lord our God for these words. Amen. As often this time of year when we get to daylight savings time, when we spring forward in the fall, we fall back. This time of year we spring forward, we gripe about the time. Well, I lose an hour of sleep. I lose something that's so precious to me. Why can't they just make up their mind? Why can't they just do it all the same way? We put more effort into grappling about time and how it affects us. We do the same thing with our jobs. I've not paid for my time, or did I get all my time in this week when you work an hourly job? Or I don't have time to finish this, or I don't have time to finish that. I don't have time to relax, or I don't have time to work. We say a whole lot of things that relate to time to ourselves, but we really don't say much about Jesus and God, the Holy Spirit, God the creator of time and the universe for all time, from the beginning of time to the end of time. His son, Jesus Christ, who took the time to come into this world. For 33 plus years, born in a barn, raised as the carpenter's son, got his hands dirty, his feet dirty, walked among us, healed people, raised people from the dead, gave us the words of life. And even then, they were like, Jesus, we ain't got time for this. Could you just do it now? See, we need to change our perspective. We need to look at the things that matter the most. My message to you this morning is the time for Jesus is right now. Is he in your life? Is he in my life? Are we putting him first? Are we living the life that he's called us to? And give him the time that he needs in all the things that we do. First chapter of the Gospel of Mark, Jesus has just come out from the desert after being 40 days in the wilderness, tempted and tried by the devil. He comes out of the desert, the very man that had baptized him, who had started this process, is now in prison. He goes to Galilee and finds Peter and Andrew and says, come follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. He goes to James and John who are sitting there with their father Zebedee mending the nets and get get it instantly. He says, come follow me. All four of those men did not look at him and go, well, Jesus, I don't have time for that. They didn't look at Jesus and go, let me see if I can make some time to fit you into my schedule. They didn't go, well, you know, we're supposed to go fishing tonight or in the morning or we got to get the boat ready. Or I don't know if I can fit that into my schedule. No, they dropped all that they had and followed Jesus. Most all the disciples, most all the apostles had the same thing. Matthew, the tax collector, 
Jesus says, come on, follow me, and I'm going to go eat at your house. He said, come follow me. And those that said to him, Lord, you know, I can't do this. First, I've got to bury my father. I've got to prove up this yoke of oxen. All sorts of excuses and the answer Jesus gave to him. You only got me for a little bit. Where's your priority? I'm going to be gone. Then where are you going to be? Time for us as human beings, as men and women, as the beautiful creation of God, is a finite, short thing. It's going to be gone in the blink of an eye. We're here. In the grand scheme of things, we only have Jesus for a little bit. And then our time is going to be done. And then we're going to be standing before the throne of heaven with St. Peter himself, with Jesus standing on the side. And Peter's going, do you know my Jesus? And then we're going, oh yeah, we do. And Jesus going, nope, I know you're not. You didn't make time for me. But how many folks say to themselves, I've even done it before I became a pastor. Well, I'll go next Sunday. I'll go the Sunday after that. I'll go when I'm ready. I'll turn my life over to God once I've got it all straightened out. You know what? God fixes you from the inside. Jesus fixes you from the inside, not from the outside. We come to him as an imperfect being. All screwed up, all messed up. And we give him the time in our heart, in our mind, in our souls, and in our bodies. And he fixes us from the inside out. Make time for me, dear Jesus. But too many of us go, well, not now, not today. Got something else to do. Jesus Christ didn't look at you and all of your sin. Didn't look at me when I've cursed his name and I've done terrible things against him and my family. He didn't look at me as he was carrying the cross up Calvary's mountain and go, you know what, I really don't have time for you. No, he took the time to be nailed to that cross, to be nailed to that tree, to die for our sins. My sins, your sins. He conquered death to show this it could happen so that we'd have the promise of eternal life. He took the time for us. He spent three days conquering death, kicking down the de jail cell doors and the gates of hell, walking right up to the devil and slapping him in his face and coming back out and says, I've set you free. But he didn't look around and says, I don't have time for you. I don't have time for that. But we ourselves personally go, well, it's just not ready yet. It's not my time. The thing about it is, everything's going to go away from us. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. In our lives, it's right in front of the blessings of God. I love springtime. We see heaven all around us. The blue bonnets, the Indian paintbrushes, the wildflowers, the green grass coming out of the dead of winter, the birds coming out and building their nests, the geese going back north. God's all around us showing the beauty. The change of the season, the passing of time, but we still go, well, I don't see it. And we know all this will pass away, but the kingdom of God remains the words of life remain. But somehow we think to ourselves, I can do it later. The honesty is we may not have later. What we have is now. Jesus talks about these end times, our own personal end times and the end times even themselves So the later part of the Gospel of Mark chapter 13, verse 31. He says this from the end of the chapter. 
Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and that hour, no man knows, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. You take heed and watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as taking a far off journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, you know not when the master of the house comes or even at the hour of the midnight or when the rooster crows in the morning. Lest he come suddenly while you were sleeping and find you sleeping. And I say unto you all, watch. Praise be the Lord our God for these words. Amen. No man knows the hour of the day, not even the Son. The Father does. It talks about the end times, but it's also talking about us. Not a single one of us can predict when we're going to leave this world. Not a single one of us can predict when our own personal end times are going to come. But my question to you is, are you living every day for Jesus? Are we loving each other? Are we making the kingdom of heaven in our own lives? Because the kingdom of heaven is all around us. It is at hand. Jesus has done his work and he has gone home. And he says, I've left it up to you to watch and to take care of things. To choose me. To live for me. To love others. Love one another as I've loved you. And he keeps saying to watch because you don't know when the hour is coming. Time is short. Our time is short. That's the honest thing. Whether we live one minute or we live 99 plus years, our time is shorter than God's eyes. It's a blink of an eye. But do we want to be standing in front of the throne saying, I know Jesus. And they said, well done, good and faithful servant, because you watched. You kept an eye out. You kept the devil away from your door. You chose the the light over the dark. You chose what was good and loving and kind over the ways of sin and death and destruction. Yes, we're all imperfect creatures. We make mistakes. We sin. But we should turn back to God and let the grace of Jesus Christ cover us and say, I'm keeping an eye out. My time is your time. Jesus, when he says, watch, he says, you don't know when the hour is coming. Don't know when the angel of the Lord is going to come for you. Now, should we live in anticipation of death? No, I say this. We should live in anticipation of life. Life everlasting where time is not going to matter, where there's no such thing as daylight savings time or springs forwards or fall back. We're in that heavenly kingdom. We're in the Father's house. Where we're on Jesus' time. But in reality, you can be on Jesus' time in this world. You can be on this on Jesus' time today, right now. When you invite him into your heart, you confess that he's your Lord and Savior. And that's the beginning of our journey. That's the beginning of what we're putting in our time. Are we too busy complaining about it and going, what's not now? See, too many people go, when is it going to happen? Jesus himself says, you're not going to know. Don't attempt to predict. Live each day like it's your last day. Live life to the fullest, loving each other, living the life that Jesus called you to, to give him that time. The kingdom of God, the time for Jesus is now. Make time for Jesus in your life. Make the space. 
make the mental time, the spiritual time, the physical time. For Jesus. Let us not be standing before the throne of heaven and he's going, well, I didn't make time for that. And Jesus says, but I made time for you. You didn't watch. You didn't prepare. Let us say, Lord, I've done it. I've made that time for you. The time for Jesus is now. The time for loving. Yes, all the signs in the world and we can go doom and gloom all over the place. But the truth is. When I have Jesus, he'll take me to the rough times. He'll take me to the good times. He'll take me to the bad times. He'll take me through the times of darkness and the times of light. And ultimately, we will stand in the city of light. In the Father's house. Because Jesus made time for you. Will you make time for him? The time for Jesus is now. I say this to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There's a promise fulfilled for each and every one of us. A guarantee that will pay off. One day, maybe in the middle of a pretty spring day, maybe me in the middle of a stormy day, Maybe in the middle of a cloudless night. One day, that old sky is going to open up. And here comes that big old chariot with the mighty white horses, the flames, thunder, lightning, and the angel of the Lord riding that chariot right on down to you. The angel's going to find you wherever you're at. I'll look at you and say, this old earthly shell is done. Your time on earth is done. Your body has served you. It's time for you to go home. He's going to pick you up, throw you on that chariot, ride you up there in front of them pearly gates, plop you down in front of St. Peter himself. He's going to pick you up, dust you off, take one look at you. He's going to ask you one question, and one question alone. Did you love my Jesus? Did you love my Jesus? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well done, good and faithful servant. The old pearly gates are going to open wide. You're going to go right on in. You'll see your loved ones, your friends, your neighbors you didn't expect even your enemies because God loves us all that's why he sent his son Jesus to save us that's why he told us I have prepared a place for you you're going to see Jesus he's going to say there it is there's that home for you far beyond the shore welcome home that's why I pray every day every day that old chariot swings mighty mighty low and carries each and every one of us home amen amen
us go forth this day, understanding that the time for Jesus is now, and that the kingdom of God is indeed at hand. In his name, go forth. Amen. Thank you.